to include couples of the same sex. Over 52% of those Californians voted to restore and preserve the traditional definition of marriage as the union of a man and a woman, a definition that has prevailed in virtually every society in recorded history since long before the advent of modern religions. And in passing Proposition 8, California joined 28 sister states that have in recent years enshrined the traditional definition of marriage in their constitutions. And many more states and the federal government have enacted clarifying statutes to the same effect. Only five states, Your Honor, have opened the institution of marriage to same-sex couples. And three of those had it imposed upon them by judges. Indeed, that's how same-sex marriage came to California in a highly controversial four to three decision in which the California Supreme Court purported to apply the people's will, a decision that had reversed the Court of Appeals in California, which had ruled uh, uh, to uphold the traditional mar uh, definition of marriage. Five months later, after the California Supreme Court's decision on election day, the people took the issue up into their own hands and they corrected the California Supreme Court's misunderstanding. While the people of California have been steadfast in their support for the traditional definition of marriage, they have also been generous, Your Honor, in extending rights, benefits, and protections to the state's gay and lesbian population. Indeed, except for the denomination of marriage for same-sex relationships, gays and lesbians in California have been immensely successful in obtaining their policy goals through the political process. As Equality California, a leading gay and lesbian rights organization, has explained, California has some of the most comprehensive civil rights protections for gays and lesbians in the nation. In addition to enacting sweeping anti-discrimination protections, California has long recognized same-sex relationships through domestic partnerships. In, in 1999, California became one of the first states in the country uh, to allow cohabiting adults of the same sex to establish a domestic partnership. And today, domestic partnerships broadly grant to same-sex couples virtually all of the substantive legal rights and benefits enjoyed by opposite-sex married couples. Indeed, Equality California and many other uh, gay rights organizations helped to write the 2003 legislation that extended the rights and benefits of marriage to domestic partners. And the group hailed the bill's enactment into law as a tremendous civil rights victory for the LGBT community. Now, Your Honor, gays and lesbians have secured these and many other legislative victories by mobilizing a strong and growing coalition of supporters. This coalition includes the state's largest daily newspapers, many of California's leading corporations, Hollywood, organized labor, a number of religious groups and leaders, political parties, professional associations, and elected officials, among many, many others. In short, Your Honor, the evidence will show that California's gay and lesbian community has substantial political power and that, Calif and that California is strongly supportive of gay and lesbian rights, more so than perhaps any other state in the country. Now against this backdrop, the support of Californians, not once in passage of Proposition 8, but twice recently in the prior passage of Proposition 22, bespeaks not ill will or animosity toward gays and lesbians, but rather a special regard for this venerable institution. Rabbi Michael Lerner, a staunch supporter of same-sex marriage, has said this. The fact is, there are millions of Americans who believe in equal rights for gays and lesbians, but draw the line at marriage. Countless people can hear themselves described by these words, Your Honor. Among those who have drawn that line is President Obama, who said this during his presidential campaign. I believe that civil unions should include the same legal rights that accompany a marriage license. However, I do not support gay marriage. Marriage has religious and social connotations, and I consider marriage to be between a man 
and a woman. To be sure, uh, Your Honor, traditional marriage, as President Obama noted, has ancient and powerful religious connotations, as Mr. Olson also mentioned. And it is true that Proposition 8 was actively and vocally supported by many from the faith community. Although a substantial number- Mr. Olson made the point that if the president's parents had been in Virginia at the time of his birth, uh, their marriage would have been uh, unlawful. That indicates that uh, there is quite a change in the understanding of uh, people's entitlement to enter into the institution of marriage. And so his argument here is that we've had a similar evolution or change in the understanding with respect to uh, people of the same sex entering into the marital institution. Isn't that, isn't that correct? Your Honor, racial restrictions were never a definitional feature of the institution of marriage. They were never. At the time that loving was decided, there were but 15 states or so left that uh, included those loathsome restrictions. The racial restrictions were clearly a product of white supremacy uh, 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 doctrine uh, and, and were plainly violations of the Equal Protection Clause, the core purpose of which was to eliminate racial restrictions of, of, of generally, but of precisely that kind of, of, of detail. The, the limitation of marriage to a man and a woman is something that has been universal. It has, it, it has been uh, across history, across cultures, across societies. The, 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 the loathsome uh, uh, restrictions based on race are of an entirely different uh, nature, Your Honor, and it is what's true. The evidence it going to, what's the evidence going to show that they are of a different nature, that these racial restrictions are different, as a matter of fact, from uh, the restriction against same-sex marriage? Your Honor, the evidence is, is going to show that they're different with respect to the, what we submit to you as the central uh, societal public purpose and state interest in connection with marriage. Uh, racial restrictions, uh, uh, the, the, the racial restrictions had nothing to do with the definitional feature of marriage that is between a man and a woman. And the purpose of the institution of marriage, the central purpose, is to promote procreation and to channel naturally procreative sexual activity between men and women into stable, enduring unions that, that, for the, the purpose. Is that, is that the only purpose of marriage? Your Honor, uh, it, 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 is, it, is the, it is the central and, and we would submit defining purpose of marriage. It's, it, is the, it, it is the basis on which and the reason on, on which marriage as an institution has been universal across societies and cultures throughout history. Two, because it is a pro-child societal institution. Um, the, the evidence will show, and you where will does, hear. Where do the other values associated with marriage come in? Companionship, support, all of those things that attend a marriage that have nothing to do with procreation. Your Honor, those assert. What's, those, the, those what's are the evidence going to show, that those are secondary, those are unimportant values associated with marriage? What it's going to show, Your Honor, is that, <coughs> the, is, is that this debate goes to the definition of marriage and, and what, its, what, its, uh, what its purpose is, whether it's going to be eff effectively deinstitutionalized, the word used by the scholars. Well, and whether, I, was and I was going to ask, what's the evidence? You, you use that uh, in your proposed findings, that extending marriage to same-sex couples would and I quote, radically alter the institution of marriage. Okay, what's the evidence going to show that would support that finding? John, it's going to show, and, and in the form of, uh, 
uh, our expert David <coughs> Blankenhorn. He will testify that a broad consensus of leading scholars suggests that across history and, and cultures, marriage is fundamentally a pro-child social institution anchored in socially approved sexual intercourse between a man and a woman. And the core need that marriage, he will, he will testify, aims to meet is the child's need to be emotionally, morally, practically, and legally affiliated with the woman and the man whose sexual union brought the child into, into uh, the world. Your Honor, the evidence is going to show that, that uh, again, marriage is and always has been designed to channel the naturally procreative sexual relationships of men and women into these enduring stable unions. Uh, it, it will show that it's good for the child because it increases the chances that the child will be raised by both its mother and its father. It's good for the mother who is less likely to have to raise the child by herself and it's good for the father because it establishes and it fixes his rights in and obligations to his child. But perhaps most importantly, Your Honor, from the state's perspective, channeling naturally procreative relationships into enduring committed marital unions decreases the likelihood that the state itself will have to help provide for the child's upbringing and that society will suffer the social ills that are often associated with children who are not raised in intact families. President Obama recently noted this reality when he said this, we know the statistics that children who grow up without a father are five times more likely to live in poverty and commit crime, nine times more likely to drop out of schools, and 20 times more likely to end up in prison. How that does permitting same-sex couples to marry in any way diminish the uh, procreative aspect or function of marriage or denigrate the institution of marriage for heterosexuals? Your Honor, because it will change the institution, as you, uh, as, as you uh, uh, noted in a question, or at least uh, uh, raised in a question to Mr. Mr. Olson, it will inevitably change the institution and hasten. And, and what's the evidence hasten. going to show in that regard? It, the evidence is going to show, again, that, uh, that the debate is whether or not this institution will remain a pro-child institution or in the words, uh, or, or whether uh, 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 the gradual transformation of marriage from a pro-child societal institution into a private relationship designed simply to provide adult couples with what the plaintiffs uh, uh, say is personal fulfillment. The question is, Your Honor, is this institution designed for these pro-child reasons or is it to produce companionship and, and personal fulfillment and uh, an expression of love? Are those, are those purposes themselves important enough to run risks to the accomplishment of the pro-child purposes, the purposes of, of... But are those risks? The risks are, Your Honor, that the nature of the institution will be altered that it will be deinstitutionalized, that the norms, the laws, the, the social conventions that have given marriage its structure and, and, that, and that have brought it into, that, 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 that uh, brought marriage into being, again, across uh, cultures, across societies and throughout history to ensure for the sake of raising children that the people who brought that child in into the world remain together to, to raise the child. And if the institution is, is, is um, uh, deinstitutionalized, as the scholars say, is gradually happening now and that this, the evidence will uh, be, Your Honor, that this will hasten and perhaps complete that process, then Mr. Blankenhorn will testify that it will likely lead to very real social harms, such as, as he will testify, lower marriage rates 
and higher rates of divorce and non-marital co cohabitation, with more children raised outside of marriage and separated from at least one of their parents. Now, the plaintiffs dispute. They dispute the likelihood that these harms will result from same-sex marriage. And uh, our point, Your Honor, is that they cannot prove that they will not flow from legalizing same-sex marriage. The same-sex marriage is simply too novel an experiment at this stage to allow for any firm conclusions, Your Honor, about its long-term effect on traditional marriage and, and the is societal there, there, interest. Excuse me. Yes, no, please. Is there any evidence from the countries and states that have permitted same-sex couples to marry, we, that marriage has been deinstitutionalized or has led to lower marriage rates or higher rates of divorce or greater incidence of non-marital cohabitation, these other matters that you've described? Your Honor, the, the, there is evidence on this, and, and we believe the evidence will show that these phenomenon have followed <clears throat> and have been associated with and part of the deinstitutionalization of marriage in other countries. What Something will that, that is, What will that evidence be? Your Honor, I believe the evidence will show that in the Netherlands, uh, marital rates have declined. Uh, rates w with respect to the uh, cohabitation of, of, of couples with children have risen. Uh, these, th these are these are phenomenon, Your Honor. That even with respect to the to the foreign countries, and Netherlands was the first country. So, uh, I, I think the evidence with respect to it is uh, has had the longest period to develop. But even respect with respect to it, Your Honor. Hey, which, firm, which witness is going to speak to this? Uh, the the. Plaintiffs actually will have witnesses who speak to, who speak to this. To the, to the experience in the Netherlands? Okay. Uh, and, <coughs> uh, but, but my, my point uh, also, Your Honor, is that with respect even to the foreign countries where there is a <coughs> greater body of experience, or at least a longer period of experience, uh, confident and reliable judgments simply cannot be made. And the institution of marriage is too vital to ask the people of California or any other st state to proceed uh, w without uh, having collected that evidence and having uh, been able to determine for themselves whether or not it indeed re represents no uh, threat to any of the s social interests that they uh, believe are important, or whether in fact uh, perhaps it does. The, the people of California are entitled to await the results of that experiment in those few places where it is being tried. Five states very recently in this country, only seven countries throughout the world, uh, Your Honor. They're entitled to await the results and assess them before they make a fundamental change and alteration uh, in the traditional definition of marriage. You use the term in your proposed findings, sexual embodiment, as distinguished from sexual orientation. Now what's the evidence going to show that the term sexual embodiment means? Your Honor, I, I, I believe that evidence will show, and I believe that evidence will show from, uh, again, Mr. Mr. Blankenhorn, that the, 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 the marriage is essentially the sexual embodiment of the man and the woman who, who uh, uh, form the marital union. It, it, is, it, it is that sexual embodiment that defines the institution. It is the, the reality that uh, only that naturally procreative conduct will bring forward life, and it is, and it is the purpose of marriage, uh, the central purpose of marriage, Your Honor, uh, to ensure that when, or at least to encourage and to support and to promote, that when that 
uh, uh, life is brought into being, it is brought into being by parents who are together, who are married, and who have taken responsibility to raise that, that child. But you stated one of, one of the proposed findings that extending marriage to same-sex couples would increase the likelihood that bisexual orientation could form a basis for legal entitlement to group marriage. What's the evidence that will support that proposed finding? No, no, I, I think that is, uh, I think that is a legal proposition uh, founded in. in Those sound like a finding of fact to me. That's what you propose. Well, I, th I think it, I think it flows from uh, uh, logical precepts, Your Honor, uh, that if if an, an individual has a right to marry the person of his choice or her choice uh, in order to express their love for that person and have a public recognition of that love and to re realize the personal fulfillment that comes from that. If that is the, the overriding purpose of marriage, then it, 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 it seems very difficult to say to someone who is a, a bisexual, if that individual loves two people, one person of both sexes, that that individual uh, doesn't have, and those individuals do not have the same uh, right to uh, express their love and have their love uh, recognized uh, by the state uh, in order that they too may achieve personal fulfillment. That is a, that is a, that is a prop proposition that we believe that if the plaintiffs are correct. That, that would assume, if, of course, simultaneous. Uh, yes, yes, it, no, it would, Your Honor. And, uh, and that's not a far-fetched assumption in light of uh, some, uh, uh, some modern conceptions of family, as, as the evidence there also will show. That's not unheard of amongst heterosexuals, is it? Uh, and, 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 Your Honor, uh, the, the traditional age-old limitation of, of marriage to one man and one woman is worth preserving for that reason as well. One Your of Honor, your proposed findings is that the recognition of same-sex marriage could end or significantly dilute the public socialization of heterosexual young people into a marriage culture. What's the evidence going to show on that? And it, it will show, and again, through, through the uh, testimony of Mr. Blankenhorn, that the deinstitutionalization of, of the institution of marriage will, uh, will hasten what we have seen uh, with respect to that institution over the years. That is, that marriage rates have declined in, in this country. Cohabitation rates uh, have increased. Uh, the, uh, to, to, to whatever extent, Your Honor, the traditional and, and uh, overriding uh, purpose, and that is the procreative and responsible procreation purposes of marriage, are diluted and, and, in, and marriage as a pro-child social institution is, is uh, uh, dil diluted or weakened, the, the, the result that you suggested in that finding of fact, we believe and the evidence will show and the testimony will be that that will follow, or at least that will likely follow. Again. Your Honor, the, the reality is that you will hear nothing but predictions in this trial about what, this will, about what the long-term effects of, of adopting same-sex marriage will be on the institution of marriage itself and on the social purposes that it serves. You'll hear nothing but predictions because it is not possible to render reliable and certain judgments on these things. And that, if for no other reason, is reason enough 
for the people of California to await until confident and reliable understandings can be developed on what those, uh, on what those uh, realities are. Your Honor, in the, in the sum, we, we submit to you that the evidence will demonstrate that the plaintiff's claims that Proposition 8 and the traditional definition of marriage are the products of animosity and that there is no legitimate public policy reason for supporting the traditional definition of marriage are unsupported and unsupportable. In fact, Your Honor, with respect to the notion that this traditional definition that has been restored to uh, California law by Proposition 8 serves no good policy, public policy reason, secular public policy reason, which uh, Mr. Ol Olson was emphatic about, simply can't stand up to the evidence of the ages. It wasn't a coincidence that every society and every culture throughout history has adopted, nurtured, protected this institution. Well, he's made the point, however, that this institution has not been static, that it's evolved rather dramatically in all sorts of ways. Uh, what precludes this institution from evolving to comprehend marriage among same-sex couples? Your Honor, n nothing precludes it. There are two states where the people, or their representatives anyway, in this country, have embraced it and have undertaken to, uh, we would submit, uh, experiment with this proposition. It is within the uh, permissible uh, political and democratic judgment of the people to make that change. And Mr. Olson spoke uh, movingly about the change in attitudes over time. And there's no question that that is true, that that is true. Uh, Proposition 22 in this state, a statutory measure, was passed overwhelmingly. Uh, Proposition 8 was passed by a substantial majority, but uh, nothing like Proposition 22 had. Uh, attitudes do change. And the political process, not you, not the members of the Ninth Circuit, and not even the members, the justices of the United States Supreme Court, are here to reflect the attitudes of the American people. That's what they have ballot booths for, Your Honor. And so nothing precludes it. The question is whether anything in our Constitution insists on it, whether anything in our Constitution takes that issue out of the hands of the people of California and the people of the neighboring states to California and the people of my home state and says, this is what the Constitution demands. You have no say in it. That there are certainly lots of issues that uh, are taken out of the hands of the body politic and put in the hands of um, judges to interpret the Constitution. Why isn't this one of them? And it's not one of them because the legal predicates of the plaintiff's case are not sound. The, the factual predicates? No, the legal predicates, Your Honor. The legal predicates. We've already had our summary judgment <laughs> hearing, Your Honor, and argued that out at great length. But uh, our, our legal uh, proposition is that the 14th Amendment does not address and govern this issue and does not take this issue out of the hands of the democratic, out of the hands of the people in the democratic process. It does not require, as it did in Loving, as it did in Loving, when it, when it said that the Equal Protection Clause was designed to eliminate racial 
distinctions. Racial distinctions that, by the way, are irrelevant to any purpose of marriage. The ones that I believe, and, and I believe the majority of Californians believe to be central, or even the ones that the plaintiffs believe, it's irrelevant to any purpose. Didn't but mis Didn't Mr. Olson mention other restrictions or prohibitions that have uh, been found to be constitutionally infirm? Uh, Mr. Olson mentioned, I think he was uh, re uh, referring to uh, some of the uh, restrictions that, that m uh, many uh, marriage regimes have placed on the wife in that regime. And yes, those have been uh, very substantially eliminated, and nobody uh, here is is going to lament that fact, Your Honor. Uh, most of those, I, I don't. I think uh, California's civil law tradition is, is one that uh, uh, that that largely uh, avoided some of the most egregious uh, oppressions of women in the marital uh, relationship. Uh, that that certainly. Uh, uh, tarnished the uh, the the marriage uh, restrictions of many of many states, uh, but those restrictions, Your Honor, have largely uh, fallen away through the legislative pro process. Those the, the legislatures have, over time, quite properly eliminated those. Uh, they I, I don't I don't have a brief for the proposition that those restrictions could survive. Uh, constitutional analysis, I don't, uh, I don't entertain much doubt that they could not. But those two, uh, Your Honor, are not by any means definitional features of the institution of marriage, the man-woman definition of marriage. And, and Your Honor, the racial restriction in loving was at war with the central purpose of marriage as we, uh, as we are submitting to you. Uh, you. You had a situation where two individuals whose, whose, uh, whose uh, sexual relations uh, would naturally lead to procreation, and yet the state forbade those individuals from uh, from forming a marital union and, and therefore for, from establishing the, the stable uh, uh, and enduring marital relationship that the state otherwise uh, sought, to, uh, sought to promote. So, Your Honor, um, uh, change, it, it, the change in attitudes that Mr. Uh, Olson mentioned, is, is not a reason that the Constitution has somehow changed to ordain the result he seeks. It's a reason, and he has spoken eloquently to many reasons, why the people of California, perhaps the people of the other states in this country, uh, should uh, consider his arguments the next time the issue is before them uh, in the political process, in the democratic process. Your Honor, I, I will sum up by saying uh, simply this, that the evidence we believe, Your Honor, will demonstrate again that the plaintiff's claims, that Proposition 8 and the traditional definition of marriage that it restored to California law, that it's their claims that, that uh, Proposition 8 is the product of animosity and that there can be no possible legitimate explanation for that traditional definition of marriage are unsupported and they're unsupportable. The people of California were entitled to make this critical decision for themselves, and they have. Thank you, Your Honor. Very well. Thank you, Mr. Olson. 
I believe those are the opening statements, and we'll take a break until 10 minutes after the hour. And uh, who's taking the first witness? Very well, Mr. Boyce, and your first witness will be first witness. Very well. Jeffrey Zarillo, he's one of the four plaintiffs. Spelling? R-R-I-L-L-O. Two R's, two L's. <laughs> 